sorrow flashed through her. She always recoiled at the sacrifices, the struggle, the fear, the violence, the blood, innocent life killed because of another's guilt. These two frightened creatures, these two doves, would soon die to make her clean. She held Jesus tighter in her arms. They entered the temple complex and made their way across the noisy court of the Gentiles toward the eastern gate of the inner wall. Hundreds were praying, men with covered and women with uncovered heads. Suddenly, in front of them, an old man appeared. Let me see the child. He sounded almost distressed. Joseph stepped up and shielded his wife. The man looked up at Joseph, first confused, and then smiled. Taking Joseph's prohibiting hand in both of his, Simeon patted it and said, I'm sorry, my son. You must forgive, old Simeon. Please don't be afraid. Your child is in no danger from me. I've just been waiting for him for so long. Mary knew immediately that Simeon knew about her child. The old man looked to her and gently asked, May I see your son? Mary smiled and nodded. Joseph stepped back. The man moved near and looked in awe at the child. Barely audible, he muttered, The salvation of Israel, the glory of Israel. Without taking his eyes off Jesus, he asked, May I hold him? Mary felt no fear as she placed Jesus into Simeon's arms. He gently rocked him and mouthed silent praise with tears streaming down his cheeks. Mary glanced at Joseph, who was wordless too. Then the old man broke into a half-sobbing prayer. Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel, as recorded in the Gospel of St. Luke. Mary again felt the shivering wonder that her baby, this one she nursed, and changed and bathed and cradled was Christ the Lord. Simeon, still gazing adoringly at the child, said, Years ago, the Lord promised me that death would not come until I had seen his Christ. Today I opened my eyes while praying, and there you were, an infant. I had never thought you would be an infant. Looking to Joseph and laugh, with laughing eyes, Simeon said, One never thinks of Christ as an infant. With a kiss of blessing, Simeon softly placed Jesus back in his mother's arms. He dried his eyes with a sleeve and turned to Joseph, laying a hand on his shoulder and said, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign that is opposed, so that the thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. Words recorded in the Gospel of St. Luke. Then turning back to Mary, he gently cupped her head with his hands and said tearfully, and the sword will pierce through your own soul. He kissed her forehead, and with one last look at the child, he moved away slowly through the crowd. And a sword will pierce through your own soul. The most wonderful, gracious event in human history was God sending his son into the world and to the cross to save his people from their sins, as St. Matthew tells us. And this gracious event caused indescribable grief for Mary, this 
is very important for us to remember. <clears throat> As God works out his salvation of sinners, he leads us along an unexpected path that results often in unexpected and sometimes agonizing pain. When it does, we can remember Mary. The darkest moment of her life, the sword that stabbed deepest into her soul, was the moment that God used most to bring salvation and joy to the world and to her. That's how God works with us also. When the sword pierces, all it feels like is terrible pain. But later we discover that our deepest wounding often becomes the channel through which the most profound grace flows. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh -huh.